Good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, my friends. <sighs> if you're watching the replay, um, we are going to be looking today um, in our study, 100 Days of Strength in Any Struggle, on day 96, um, Cleaning Up Broken Glass by Tasha June. I am not Tasha June, <laughs> I am Becky Keith, um, and I'm so delighted that you are here. So we're gonna wait a few minutes to see um, who will be joining us live, but if you're watching the replay, welcome. <clears throat> Grab your book if you have it. If you don't, that's okay too. Grab your Bible if you have it. Um, I'm drinking some uh, vanilla decaf chai tea this morning um, in one of my favorite day spring mugs it says it is well with my soul <clears throat> and then the other side says my favorite verses Psalm 116 7 let my soul be at rest again for the Lord has been good to me <clears throat> and I think that uh, we are all going to see that today the goodness of the Lord, um, even in the midst of our struggles, maybe especially in the midst of our struggles. All right, well, <clears throat> I am going to get started because I have jury duty today, <laughs> so I have to get on the road pretty quick here. But my name is Becky Keefe. I am the community and editorial manager for Encourage. Um, I had the great joy of helping put together um, this beautiful book, and I trust that God is meeting you in these pages. And like I said, um, today we are in the theme Honest prayer. We're going to talk about honest prayer and how God um, answers us and meets us when we cry out to him. And today we are on day 96, Cleaning Up Broken Glass by Tasha June. Tasha really wanted to be here with you all um, today. And unfortunately, um, she wasn't able to. So I am stepping in and glad to be spending this time with you. So um, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that your mercies are new every morning. I thank you that you are the God who sees us and the God who hears us. That you invite your daughters into honest conversation with you every day, morning, noon, and night. And that you are such a good father that you tune your ear to our voice. And then you teach us to listen to your voice. Um, and I pray that you would do that even in this time together today um, for the women who are who are here um, live in this moment. But God, you are not bound by time. And so those who are watching um, the replay later today or even weeks or months from now, God, you are with us in this moment and we receive your presence and we are grateful for you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Um, so I am going to um, read Cleaning Up Broken Glass by Tasha June. <clears throat> Last week, my oldest dropped a drinking glass. I watched his eyes pop like a puffer fish as the blue ball jar transformed into a million shards and flew across every inch of our slate tile kitchen floor. <clears throat> After immediately quarantining him myself in the kitchen, I shooed my kids out. Then I stood there looking at all the fragments and splinters. I wasn't sad over losing the drinking glass. Glass. I was amazed by what it had become. Sometimes life feels like standing in a room surrounded by shards, by, excuse me, surrounded by sharp splinters and rough edged remnants of what was. 
overwhelmed, I stood in the middle of the mess and just stared. Then I whispered the word, help. Even a paltry prayer for help can awaken my hope that God is ever present and unsurprised by the wreckage in my every day. Pick up one jagged piece and then another, he whispered back to me in the kitchen that day. So I bent low to see the tiny pieces up close and started cleaning up, slow and steady. Despite my orders to stay away, one of my sons offered help by bringing a bag for the glass and asking if he could get the vacuum. Another son brought the bandages when he heard me yelp in pain after stepping on glass. And our littlest came closer with a box of tissues in hand, just like the others have done for her when she's hurt or sad. Moments like these give us space to see our needs and care for each other. They train us to give and receive love. Grace always weaves its way in and through the wreckage and the wounds. Sometimes all we can do is stare at the mess, ask for help, and wait to see new mercies winnow through, making us wonder again. When we bend low, go slow, and look for one piece to pick up, we'll find that one tiny piece after another, become one small space after another, made safe again. Thank you, Tasha, for these beautiful words. Um, and I just, I love how the Lord just met Tasha in, in her physical reality of this broken glass mess and how God uses our everyday circumstances to speak truth to our hearts. That, um, that he is available. That sometimes if we don't have the words to pray, an honest prayer is help help that can be your honest prayer today and I love this this image of you know the shards of broken glass and how it can we can feel overwhelmed by our physical mess and brokenness or more often our internal mess and brokenness the, the our messy and broken cir circumstances um, and yet what does God say just one piece at a time and he will lead us how to clean up how to heal, how to move forward, and in his goodness and compassion, he often sends people like Tasha's children um, in, in this story to come alongside and help us pick up those broken pieces as well. Um, and I love um, today's verse is Psalm 34, 6. In my desperation, I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. In my desperation, I prayed. God is giving us a model that when we don't know what to do, when we feel paralyzed by our circumstances, when we feel, feel overwhelmed, when the broken pieces feel like if we take one step forward, we're just going to get cut too deep. And so it's easier to stay um, even in the midst of that mess and self-protect. And, and he's saying, no, cry out to me. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. We know and serve and love and are loved by the God who listens. And not only does he invite us to cry out, not only does God listen to our cries and our prayers, but he saved me from all my troubles. He is the God of action. He responds. He responds. He invites us. He listens to us and he responds to us. Um, and that doesn't save us from going through struggles, right? The fact that God responds didn't, it wasn't like one of those like slow-mo videos in reverse where it's, I picture like, like that, that glass shattering and then like it, like it reverses and comes back together. Like that's not, um, usually how, how God works, but just as miraculous is that the God of the universe meets us in our broken places and helps us pick up our broken pieces and makes them whole again. And I would say even more beautiful. And so with that, I want to tell you a quick story that the Lord brought to my mind as I was meditating um, on this passage in Psalm 34 and thinking about Tasha's devotion. Um, and I want to read a couple more verses from Psalm 34. So if you have your Bibles and want to turn there, 
Um, now I'm going to be reading out of the out of the CSB. This is our Encouraged Devotional Bible. This is a very old cover. We have beautiful new covers of the Encouraged Devotional Bible. If you're looking for a great women's Bible, um, but starting in verse four. Um, you'll see it just reiterates this idea of God invites us to, to cry out. He listens and he responds. Verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and rescued me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant with joy. Their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around, around those who fear him and rescues them. So sometimes we are faced with the broken pieces of our own lives. And sometimes we're, we come face to face with the broken pieces of other people's lives. And that was my experience um, a little <laughs> while ago. Um, I had a friend who was sharing with me some really, really difficult things that she has been going through. And she's been going through them for a long time. <clears throat> and she left me a voice message um, sharing kind of the newest <clears throat> or most recent um, just set of circumstances that were really leaving her brokenhearted. <clears throat> and like most of us, her, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, <clears throat> it's still early here <laughs> in California. You're the, you're the first people I'm talking to this morning. <clears throat> like most of us, my friend's circumstances were complex and layered and without a quick fix. And she's, I'm listening to a message and she's just pouring out her heart and she's really feeling just at the end of her rope, feeling um, hopeless, desperate, like 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 the person in our psalm today in my desperation she was in a place of desperation and she kept on saying you know that she just it made me think of this because of today's devotion just that she was so broken and it felt like it would always be that way that she would always be surrounded by the broken pieces of her life and that there was no way to move forward and so of course my heart is breaking with my friend and some thoughts have come to mind and things I want to say to encourage her. Um, but before I picked up the phone to message her back, I prayed a really simple prayer that I've been praying a lot lately and it's been transformational. And this is something, sometimes you all we can pray is help, right? Like Tasha did. Um, that is <laughs> That is a complete sentence, help, and God will hear that cry. Um, but another thing that I think is really powerful and effective to pray is, God, what do you want me to know and what do you want me to do? God, in this brokenness, whether it's ours or someone else's, God, what do you want me to know and what do you want me to do? So I'm sitting on my back porch, see the chair right there looking out my window, and I just, I, I just ask God that question. God, what do you want me to, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to say to my friend? She is your daughter. You love her more than I could. What do you, what do you want me to know before I just message back? Because I don't want to rely on just human wisdom. Um, I want to rely on God's wisdom. And so I, that was my prayer. And a picture came to my mind. That's it. Just a picture. And the picture was of. Um, that style of Japanese pottery where um, <clears throat> broken pieces are brought back together with gold and um, <clears throat> and in that way the broken pieces are made stronger and more beautiful. Uh, it's called kintsugi but at the time I, I didn't know the name of it. I just I knew what it was and I had a picture in my mind and that's all and so I was like okay that that's all I had. So I messaged my friend back and I give her words of encouragement and I let her know that she is seen and, and, and held and that I'm praying for her and I'm there for her. And then at the end of the message, I say, I tell her, I was like, hey, so before I started this, I asked God, what, what do you want me to know? And this picture popped into my, popped into my mind. And so I describe it to her. And I tell her, I said, I think 
but that's a picture that God wants you to hold on to um, because he is the God who can take our broken pieces and put them back together in a way that they will be stronger and more beautiful than before, a way that only the artist can imagine, but one day you will hold, you will live in a life that it's not the same as it was, but it will be beautiful and it will be made whole. Um, and then I went inside and started making dinner for my kids, right? <clears throat> and then a little while later, my phone buzzed and uh, with, with text messages in response from my friend. And the first thing she said was just one word, kintsugi. And I was like, yes, that's it. Like, that, that's the thing I couldn't remember. I'm like, oh, you know what it is. And she said, yes. And then she sent me um, <clears throat> sent me a photo of it. And I was like, oh yeah, th that's exactly it. And then she said, Becky, I'm crying listening to your message um, because I bought you a piece of kintsugi for your birthday. And I've been meaning to give it to you for months. Well, she brought it months ago. My birthday had only passed maybe a few weeks. She goes, it's in my car right now waiting to give to you. This is it. I have it on my desk now and I hold my chapsticks and stuff in it. <clears throat> this is the piece of kintsugi. Okay, isn't it beautiful? These pieces of pottery made whole again. <clears throat> and now she's not the only one who's crying. I am crying too because that is the God who speaks. That is the God who hears our cries and responds to our needs. And he didn't wave a magic wand and change all of my friend's circumstances, but he showed her and he showed me that he is intimately acquainted with our broken pieces, with our broken lives, with our hurts, with our concerns, with our struggles. And he wants to infuse hope into your life, into your heart today. I mean, and I asked her, I was like, why did, why did you get me this for my birthday? And, she, and again, it was months before, and she's like, I, I just saw it, and I just thought of, I just thought of you. I just, I don't even know what you're gonna do with it. I just thought that, that this was the gift for you. And so months in advance, months and months in advance, God had been working and orchestrating this moment to infuse hope, to strengthen not only her faith but mine, that we can cry out to God, that we can speak to Him, and He does listen and He does respond. Again, Psalm 34, 6, in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened and he saved me from all my troubles. Kintsugi. And so I wanted to share that story with you and, and this beautiful piece of pottery as a picture of hope and an encouragement to come to God today with your honest prayers. Whether you are faced with your own brokenness or someone else, ask God that question. God, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to do? Maybe he's going to give you a word or a picture to share with someone else. And you're going to feel a little awkward. You're going to be like, um, I, don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> or what if that's not meaningful? Or what if it feels trite? Or God casts out our fears when we obey and listen to his voice. And I didn't hear an audible voice. I believe that most of the time we don't. But if you are in Christ, then you have been given the mind of Christ. And the fact that we are given the mind of Christ means that he speaks through our minds, through our thoughts. He is living and dwelling inside of us. And so if you ask God a question, pay attention. Pay attention to what he's going to say to you. Because he is the God who speaks. I have proof. Um, and I know that he is going to infuse hope into your life today. So I, I pray that that encourages you. Um, I encourage you to read all of Psalm 34 today, um, meditate on the words, and thank God that he is right there with you in the midst of your broken pieces. And he will help you pick them up and move forward and make something even more beautiful. Let me pray. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for the gift of this time. I thank you for the gift um, of your word. I thank you that you are the God who speaks, who meets us. Um, who loves us, who has good plans for us. Thank you that the brokenness we face today is not the end of the story. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.